Hello everybody, be sure to stay to the end of the video for more information about this channel. Reptilia crocodilia, or as we know it, the American alligator, the largest reptile in North America. Statistics will suggest that the probability of being killed by an alligator is, in fact, extremely low. But why should we tempt the odds? The term travel vlogger gets thrown around a lot these days. It's a standard on YouTube, consistently trending on Instagram, and can be confusing for those seeking a taste of reality. I'm Mike Johnston. I write for fun, I travel out of necessity, and these are my travel diaries. All right, now what? Road trip. Road trip. <laughs> we are doing things a little different this time. Arriving in the ATL, we rent a family truckster and make a dash to the oldest city in the United States, St. Augustine, Florida. The thing about road trips are, it's about the slowest way to travel between two points, which is exactly the idea. It's an opportunity to take in the sights and spend some quality time together, with a few pit stops along the way. Welcome to Florida. Founded by the Spanish in 1565, St. Augustine, Florida is officially the oldest continuously inhabited European established settlement in the United States. This is where America truly started. Like most of Florida, St. Augustine enjoys an average of 120 days of sunshine each year. It has some of the most amazing beaches in the U.S. and is listed as one of the most beautiful towns in America by Condé Nast Traveler. The city's distinct character and historical relevance has made it a major tourist attraction. And it's that history that is part of the allure here. During the hundred years following its founding, pirates routinely pillaged and plundered this city. In response, the Spanish constructed Castillo de San Marco, a massive stone fortress built of indigenous rock and seashells. Never taken in battle, it still stands today. A national park worth exploring and a monument to the resiliency of this city. Go check it out. Now, let me be clear. I'm not a fan of high traffic tourist spots or attractions. I try to avoid them at all costs. But you do need to experience some of these places at least once in your life. And St. Augustine definitely qualifies here. Case in point, the Fountain of Youth. Explorer Ponce de Leon was searching for this fountain when he first stepped foot here in 1513. Legend has it, he was told by Native Americans that the fountain could restore youth to anyone who drinks or bathes in its waters. Judging by the age of this tour guide alone, I call BS on that. Nevertheless, today, this historical archaeological site has become somewhat of a local theme park, complete with educational programs, ripe with historical accuracy, and delivered by people who, apparently, love to dress up in ye old period garb, which, if you're into history, like I am, it's actually a pretty cool experience. And downtown here on St. George Street, the central focal point of ye old city, you and your fanny pack will be welcomed with open arms into tourist heaven. Just through the old city gates, there's the oldest wooden schoolhouse. And it looks like they're expanding. I'm sure that's really old wood though, right? There are enough restaurants, bars, beds and breakfasts, and bric-a-brac stores to satisfy your every touristy need and desire. They've got it all, friends. If you hang around long enough, I'm willing to bet that you are virtually guaranteed to meet a Jack Sparrow. Look. And 
undead monkey. Talk back. There's also an odd fascination with death here. Haunted locations, graveyards, and ghost tours are abundant. So for all my goth friends, feel free to book one at your leisure. And of course, there is no better indicator of a quality tourist destination than the number of putt-putt golf courses in close proximity to downtown. For God's sakes, I can't take much more of this touristy shit today. We're in Florida. Let's just go to the beach. Maybe luck will continue, and a seagull with diarrhea will come along soon. I'm really trying, friends, but this ain't really working for me. If this is your thing, then Groovy Man, you're gonna love this place. I think we'll call it a day. I'm likely one of the oldest travel vloggers on YouTube. So, in the oldest city, I fit right in. And tourist jokes aside, honestly, there are some real surprises here. I will now draw a picture of a Spanish lady who had her husband's portrait tattooed on her tongue. I think Robert L. Ripley was one of the original travel vloggers. Ripley's Believe It or Not captivated people with its amazing and sometimes far-fetched stories from around the world. The Believe It or Not Museum in St. Augustine is a little touristy for sure. But in context of history and travel, it's a pretty interesting experience. The precursor to travel videos we consume today on YouTube and Instagram. Exotic foreign locations are one thing, but Florida itself can be pretty exotic on its own. Know this, fellow travelers, if there's a body of fresh water in Florida, there's likely one of these beasts just lurking inside. The average adult alligator can grow up to 13 feet in length and weigh almost 1,000 pounds. This is the stuff of nightmares, friends. So, if Jurassic Park has a modern-day equivalent, it's here at the St. Augustine Alligator Farm and Zoological Park. Starting as a small exhibition of indigenous reptiles, it has since become the quintessential Florida attraction. It functions as a modern zoo, providing education, exotic exhibits, and serves as a base for global conservation efforts. And, I've got to be honest, our visit here was one of the highlights of this trip. If you need more nightmare-inducing visuals, friends, you can also see extremely rare white alligators here. Beginning as two of only 12 white alligators in the world, conservation efforts have been successful at starting to preserve this species. These particular alligators are vulnerable. Their lack of skin pigmentation deprives them of natural camouflage. This puts them at risk in the wild, not just from poaching, but other alligators. And, due to this rare condition, they are housed in a special enclosure to protect them from the sun. Like us humans, they will actually get sunburns, which could be fatal. Statistics will suggest that the probability of being killed by an alligator is, in fact, extremely low. But, an alligator is able to move at speeds up to 30 miles per hour within the first 20 feet of exiting the water and can lunge the length of its body. So, it's best to avoid these creatures in the wild. Even your best Forrest Gump won't help you here. Believe it or not. When you travel, friends, food is just part of the game. And in this historical tourist destination, many places are just lazy, cookie-cutter, beach food joints that market to the unsophisticated palate. Like this place, the second best pizza in the U.S. And they are proud of that. Don't waste your time. This hidden gem is where you want to be. Mojo's Tacos, a local favorite and damn good taqueria. You want to find this in your tourist guides. Tacos, burritos, bowls, any one is a snack, but two is a meal. For me, it's the taco today. A warm, soft tortilla, welded to a crunchy hard shell using cheddar cheese, and then stuffed with your choice of chicken, beef, shrimp, or tofu. 
topped off with lettuce, fresh salsa, and their signature mojo sauce. Trust me, friends, it's a party in your mouth. If you've never had proper fish and chips, then look no further. Just off the touristy path of St. George Street lies the Prince of Wales, an authentic British pub tucked quietly away from the masses. Here, you can indulge in fresh cod, beer battered and deep fried to perfection. Apologies in advance to my British brethren, but this stuff is better than some I've had in London. I'm not joking. If you fancy a visit yourself, look for our dollar bill on the wall and make sure you ask to see Prince Albert. You can thank me later. And last but not least on our little food tour, in what looks like to be an abandoned house, sits one of the best diners in the South, the Gas Full Service Restaurant. Sure, it was featured on Food Network, but it's home to the locally famous Jalapeno Popper Burger. But don't break out the antacids just yet. I highly recommend the chicken sandwich or a classic burger. Both will more than satisfy your taste buds. The Leitner Museum is housed in the former Alcazar Hotel, built in 1888 by Henry Flagler. Flagler was an American industrialist and co-founder of Standard Oil. He took a liking to Florida and, in particular, St. Augustine. He decided it would make a fine winter resort for wealthy Americans from the north. So, to bring them south, he bought a few railroads, combined them, and formed the Florida East Coast Railway in 1885 something you can afford to do when you are the co-founder of the world's largest monopoly. The site of his former Ponce de Leon Hotel is now home to Flagler College, a private four-year liberal arts college that effectively improves the demographics of this town dramatically. Florida contains the highest percentage of people over 65 in the nation, so it's not surprising that it's considered by many to be the stairway to heaven. But being a college town, sitting on some of the least crowded beaches in the state, this place has a much hipper vibe than most any other place you'll find in the state of Florida. In fact, I know this fountain is bullshit, but just in case. Let me correct something from earlier. I am not anti-beach. I just can't sit there and do nothing all day. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I do enjoy a good evening stroll with an occasional frolic in the waves. And we didn't even catch a flesh-eating virus, so we've got that going for us, which is nice. However, we do find ourselves here during America's birthday celebration, Independence Day, a time-honored tradition complete with fireworks. And since those are legal here, there's plenty of entertainment for the masses. Patriotism is defined as the feeling of love, devotion, and a sense of alliance with others who share the same sentiment. And today, I feel that sense of love and alliance with those closest to me, Cat and the kiddo. It's a pretty good feeling. It's also fascinating to me that I'm standing on the shores of a city originally founded by the Spanish, living historical proof that we are one big melting pot of cultures in America, and we should hold on tightly to that ideal regardless of our politics. St. Augustine, Florida, the oldest city in the United States. Yes, it can be a little touristy, but definitely a place worth adding to your future destinations list. Hello, everybody. If you made it this far, thank you for watching this episode. And please remember to like, subscribe, follow, and share this with your friends. It helps me tremendously. But even more so, I think a lot of people don't realize that I'm truly a one-man show. I don't have a film crew. I don't have a bunch of people that follow me around. I write, I produce, I film, I edit. That's not an easy feat. So if you'd like to learn more about that, head over to my website at socialpants.com. There, for the price of a latte every month, you can become a patron. That gets you early access to my episodes, behind the scenes videos, and field notes from the road. And if you're already a patron, Thank you, and I'll see you in the next episode.